Hi everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. My name is Freya Casey, professional singer and vocal coach. If you have never been to my channel, welcome. This is the channel for singing tutorials, everything about technique, but it's way beyond technique. It's also a lot about mindset because we're going to talk about that today. It is really important. What goes on in here, you can hear, definitely. So hi, Rino. It's good that you're here. So I'm going to answer your questions after I get through the lesson, but I really wanted to cover a topic today that comes up all the time. It's really important. I have noticed over the years in myself, all my experience that I've had on stage in opera theater with bands, with combos, singing, all different genres, all different situation, musical theater, like all different settings. I've been on cruise ships. I've been like in all kinds of venues all over the world. And I've also learned by teaching my students that just confidence and what is going on in your mind while you're practicing and especially while you're performing is huge. It does a lot to your voice because your instrument happens to be your body. It's definitely an important factor because as soon as you're not confident, you're not going to sing outright. Your posture is going to be not ideal. You're not going to support. It's like a chain reaction. When you doubt and when you hesitate, a bunch of things happen that don't really help you to sing better. And I want to address this today. I actually have a couple of resources that, that I'm going to tell you about over the course of this video. So please stay tuned. There's a free resources source that I'm going to give you. So I have made a bunch of videos about this, but it seems like still a lot of singers underestimate what confidence really can do a lot. And I know that you should be training your technique and you should be training your singing just itself, just, you know, how the vocal cords close and how you are getting better timbre, better resonance, how you can get better sound with less work. But don't, don't not work on your confidence and on your mindset. You can't not work on it. You can't afford not to work on it. I've experienced over the past 20 years that, I mean, I told the story on my other channel, Find Your Voice, if you want to check it out, that when I was a kid, I was the, the shyest girl on the planet. You wouldn't believe it now. I mean, I was so shy. I was timid. I was I was terrified to be in front of people. I was terrified to meet anyone I didn't know and to say hello. And, to, you know, I was just terrified. It was so difficult for me. And then I remember when I, I mean, although I was on stage with my dad as a kid already, that was okay. And singing in a choir, that was okay. And being on stage playing the piano and with a choir, that was okay. And then even playing the flute. I went to conservatory to actually study flute professionally. I wanted to be a professional flutist. Even that was that I didn't even need confidence for because it was just about the instrument and it was something external. It wasn't something that reflected me personally. And I didn't feel embarrassed when I played the flute. And, you know, when I made a mistake, it was just something that it not, it's not like that was something wrong with me personally, but I just made a mistake, right? But we all know as singers, whenever someone criticizes your singing or you get up and you mess up, it's like, it's so personal. It's so different from playing an instrument. It is just so personal. And it is so much more terrifying to get up and sing because then you're also supposed to act and you have words and like what are you supposed to be doing with your hands? I mean, when you have an instrument, you don't have that problem. Your hands are on the instrument, right? But as a singer, like, what do you do with your hands? Do I look awkward? I'm supposed to be telling the story. So essentially, you're, of course, an actor and you're you telling a story. So that makes it a lot more difficult. Getting into the mindset of really letting go of like looking at yourself from the outside and worrying about what others think about you whenever you're performing in that moment, 
that is such a long way to come. And take it from me. I know what it feels like because I remember exactly when I was in college. I mean, I got a full scholarship to study voice at Southern Methodist University. It's a pretty renowned university. If you're from the States and if you're from Texas, you know, it's it's a big deal. It's very expensive to go there. And I didn't have any money. So I auditioned and they took me and I got a full ride, which was just amazing. But then I got into these situations where I had to get up in front of class and I had never really, you know, I was supposed to act the song and really be the role of all these opera arias. And that was so hard for me. I was actually pretty good at acting, but I was not good at acting when someone was watching me, <laughs> which of course, you know, you're supposed to, people are watching you when you do it. And it was so hard. I remember I was standing there and the singing part was, that wasn't so hard for me. It's like, can I just stand here and sing as pretty as I can and not have to deal with like, you know, I, I was, I was like, I can't, I want to move my arm, but I just really can't because I'm too shy to do it. Do I look weird? It's like, I wanted to do this gesture, but then I couldn't because I was too shy. Um, so let me just tell you a few of those stories. I just remember, I, I just remember a lot of situations where I would even be with an orchestra and I had it all figured out ahead of time what I wanted to do. I had acted it at home. But then when I got in front of the audience, it was like, nope, oh, I can't quite do it now. And I was like, didn't quite follow through because I couldn't. I was terrified. I don't know. It was like something, you know this feeling, right? It's like, you know how to do it, but you just can't quite do it. Something, it's like somebody is tying your arms and you can't quite move naturally. And it looks like a dance. It looks like weird when you're moving on stage. You're leaning forward, your posture isn't like it was, you just don't look confident and you don't sound confident. And then, you know, this is a side effect, which is a pretty bad side effect. When you're not confident and you even doubt that you can hit that high pitch, it's not gonna work. It's totally not gonna work. It's not gonna come out. So um, confidence is important, both to just the way that you present and the way you come across and the way that you're gonna sound. I mean, when you're timid, when you don't trust your own skills, there's no way you can do it because you're not going to support. You're not going to take a deep breath because you can make everything small just because you're like, I'm not quite going to make it. This happens in my studio all the time with my students. They, <laughs> I already know if the high pitch is going to come out or not. I already know if they're going to get that entrance or not. I know it ahead of time because I can already see it in their posture and I can hear it in their breath and in the preparation they're, they're doing. And so um, if you're not confident enough in, yes, I'm going to get this now, uh, chances aren't so great it is going to come out. <laughs> so you need to be like 10x confident to then have the result that you really desire. And I know how that goes, right? At home, you can totally do it. When you're on your own, when you're alone, and nobody's watching you, you can do so much more than you can when someone's watching you. If you have a teacher, it's always this effect like, oh, I could do it when I was home. Why is it not working now? Well, in German, there's a word we call it the Vorführer effect. It's like, you know, as soon as you demonstrate to someone, it's just not there anymore and you can't quite do it. So how do you deal with that? How do you boost your confidence? Now, the f you're not going to like the answer. <laughs> you're not going to like this answer. First of all, there's absolutely not a quick fix because you have to dig deep down into your personality and really brainwash yourself into a new mindset. You have to change your BS. BS meaning your belief system. If your belief system is something along the lines of, I'm just not good enough, or I don't like my voice, or I always keep making this mistake or I look awkward on stage, then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's what's going to come out. And that's the vibe your audience gets. You know, human beings are very empathic creatures. Don't underestimate human beings. Like anyone who watches you or is listening to you, a lot is transmitted from you to other people. 
And although maybe some people don't know like how to quite put their finger on it, but they get the vibe of someone is confident and someone who's confident they're drawn to because there's something about it. It, it, it just transmits strength and um, positivity and everyone's drawn to that. But if you are radiating this doubt, insecurity, nobody likes that because if you think you're an imposter, how is your audience supposed to believe that you're great? So first of all, you have to, you have to brainwash yourself into believing that there is something great about your voice and that you do have skills. You have to not just, whenever you criticize yourself, it is good to recognize your shortcomings. You have to. And you have to know what it is that you need to work on. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I know I got stuff to work on. But instead of just judging your voice and saying, I just hate my voice or it, it just uh, it sounds horrible and that's why I'm not going to perform anymore because it just sounds horrible. Well, you know, that's not going to help you. It's not constructive criticism. Constructive criticism means, okay, I think I sound strained. Now, why do I sound strained? I think I don't have good support or my vocal cords can't quite support a high belted pitch. I just slip into this really breathy tone. So maybe I could work on my vocal cord closure and compression some more. So naming the problem already gives you the solution or the way to a solution, right? So you have to name the problem and not just say, oh, this is so bad, I sound terrible or I just can't do it. And the worst thing you could ever, 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 ever do, that's a big no-no, big no-no, is to announce whether it's at the beginning of your lesson or at the beginning of a performance, that was like the biggest no-no, to announce that you're not going to be great. <laughs> it's like, well, I, I'm not feeling well today, so this is going to be not so great. <laughs> Nobody's interested. It's like, do your best, okay? Do your best and don't announce an excuse already. It's an excuse. Don't announce that, right? So, um, Michael, what does your think? You're worried about my speaking voice when I lecture? Um, maybe it's me. I'm tired. Sorry. I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. My speaking voice, that's just my speaking voice. And I could talk for hours like that probably. I recorded my audiobook in December and that was like hours and hours of speaking every day and but didn't didn't make me hoarse or anything so I, I'm not sure what you're hearing in my speaking voice of course I'm speaking up louder when I'm talking to a live stream I don't know why that is but um so uh let me continue here and then I will so one thing that has helped me a lot to brainwash myself into believing more in myself of course, first of all, is a lot of practice and a lot of getting up in front of an audience, which of course I've had to. I mean, that has been my full-time job for almost 20 years now. And so over the years, when you start hearing lots and lots of positive feedback, which I honestly, I really, I've never had any negative feedback, really haven't ever, except for YouTube but that's YouTube, right? But anytime I performed anywhere, any gigs, like thousands of gigs I've done, I've never had a negative reaction. <laughs> so maybe I've had a comment that was like, well, I, maybe I would like this song for your voice better or so, but I've never had any negative comments. And that does, of course, over time, boost confidence. However, there is a way to let this happen faster, and that's by affirmations. I really strongly believe in affirmations. I listen to my affirmations every day. Um, I actually have an app. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, um, but it's called Think Up. So it's, it looks like this, Think Up. And what you can do, you can record your own affirmations in your own voice, 
and you can choose a musical track and then you can listen to it every day. And that's what I do. I have created, I have a free resource for you. I have created affirmations for singers that help you become more confident. Tell yourself every day, you know, listen to those affirmations every day. And really, I, I'm telling you, it's just the most amazing thing. My affirmations, I've been listening to them for about a year and a half every single day, and a lot of them have already come true. Um, it's very powerful because your RAS, your reticular activating system, your brain starts looking for opportunities and ways to make those things come true that you keep feeding your brain all the time as if it was already reality. So you can go, I put the link below the video already, but you can go to my website, masteryourvoice.tv slash, what is it now? Affirmations for singers, always with a dash or hyphen rather, I guess. Um, and there's, I recorded free affirmations for singers specifically that help you be more confident and believe to change your BS, change your belief system into believing that you enjoy being in front of an audience, that you love doing what you do as a singer, and that you are confident. Now, let me tell you another hack. Instead of focusing on everything around you and on worrying about what can go wrong, you have to really get into the habit of focusing only on yourself because that's the only element you can control is yourself. You can't control what someone thinks, what someone else does. All you can control is what am I going to do? What am I going to learn? And how am I going to react? So those are the elements that you have control over. So instead of focusing on everyone else, which you can't influence, focus on yourself. But here's the thing. Don't focus on yourself in a negative way. Focus yourself in a very positive way. You have to learn to see yourself as someone who has something to give. Like you have a gift and it's God-given and it's precious. And it is selfish to just keep it to yourself. You have it for a reason and you were given a voice for a reason. So your voice is a very powerful tool. And especially when you pair it with music, lyrics, music, and a melody, it can be very powerful. So what I think when I'm in front of an audience, I don't really think about, I don't worry about what they think, but I'm thinking about, I'm going to give everything that I have and I'm not going to hold back. First of all, I love the music and I'm totally going to enjoy it. It's amazing. And I'm, if nothing else, I'm just singing for myself here as far as I'm concerned. And this is, this is, I, I've gotten so deep by now into this that even when I'm playing for weddings, you know, and I'm playing these songs, sometimes, I mean, I'm close to tears because I'm so deep in the music and it never fails. Just the fact that I'm so deep in music and I'm almost like, I'm almost in tears. I'm really in it. That really touches other human beings because I'm radiating the, the emotions and I'm radiating the connectedness to the music. And I'm radiating the positivity. Um, and that really helps me connect to my audience. It's almost like they're drawn in because, you know, I, I, I'm not looking on the outside for approval, but instead, I'm just in my world and I'm so in it. And I'm not worried about anything. I'm just like, <sighs> I'm just soaking up the music. And that draws everyone in. And I know it is not easy to not focus on everyone else out there. But when you focus on everyone else out there, you're going to make a bunch of mistakes because there's so much you can pay attention to. I mean, there's a crack here and then someone's coughing there. And then there's a little kid there. 
and then someone's face looks like they're not happy. And so you're starting to think like, what are they thinking? Are they hating it? Am I sucking at what I do right now? And you start having all these thoughts and doubts creep in, not a good thing. So instead of focusing on the outside, just assume that you're sharing your experience with everyone. And that is just the, that, that's the mindset you have to get into, to this positivity. Because, you know, even if someone hates what you do, there's nothing to change about it. I mean, you can't change what someone, I mean, if someone is a negative person and they want to be hateful, you're not going to change that really. But what you can affect is yourself, the way you see yourself, the way you think, the way you react. And when you practice, really, singing is always two-sided. There is the very technical aspect of just learning your technique, learning to make sounds, learning to have better control over your voice so that you can do anything and everything you need to do in your singing. And then there's this other side of feeling the music. Because even, right, perfect technique has no soul. If it's just perfect technique, um, I don't know, you could have a robot sing, but it wouldn't be the same because human beings crave human connection and authenticity. I know this word is used so much, but for me, authentic means I'm not trying to play anything. I'm not trying to be anything. I'm not trying to show off anything. I'm just humbly coming to a place where I'm just being myself and just giving what I can. And if someone loves it, I'm very happy about it. If someone hates it, then we're not supposed to be together, right? They're, they're not, they don't have to watch me or listen to me. And it's legitimate when someone hates what I do, which has never happened really. But that's okay. I don't take it as something's wrong with me or I'm going to have to convince them. Everyone has a different taste and everyone, everyone is just different, right? I mean, even who we're attracted to. I mean, you could think one person thinks this person is the most beautiful person and the next person thinks, wow, no, ah, not my type at all. And it's the same with voices, right? I mean, you could love a singer and your friend could be like, nah, I hate those. I hate that singer. Sounds terrible to me. Um, and it's okay. And, you know, even with anything and everything you do, don't, don't have this like, oh, they must like me. They must not like, you know, they don't have to like me. If, you know, just be authentically yourself. And I think that really helps you to relax. That helps you to relax into, hey, I'm okay the way I am. I don't have to try to be something else. I want to improve. I want to get better. I want to get stronger. I want to learn. I want to build. I want to just build myself up and I want to develop. But, you know, don't, don't get into this rut of just worrying so much about everyone else. What, what do they think? I would not be on YouTube anymore if that were the case. You have to really be thick-skinned on YouTube because it's just, I mean, YouTube has, just has a culture of, most people are very positive, but there are just some people on YouTube. I've never had, I've never seen any other platform that had this culture of, it's okay to be like totally crazy hateful and make really nasty comments. And you know that this happens on YouTube all the time. And I'm very happy that in my community, actually, it's very positive, like 99.9% .9 of all the time. It's very, very positive. Very happy about that. And I don't really like to tolerate negativity. Constructive criticism, absolutely. You know, if anyone can tell me that they don't like something or that they don't agree, that's absolutely legitimate. That's okay. I don't agree with everything and I don't like everyone either. I talked about this in my last live stream that I had, you know, I did Saturday about what I think about other vocal coaches. But yeah, it, it's d d not everybody has to like you and it's okay. It's okay. If somebody hates what you do, then that's okay. They can go and watch someone else, listen to someone else. 
And even the style of music you do, not everyone, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. So try affirmations to help you overcome this mindset of negativity and focusing on the outside. You have to focus on you because that's the only thing you can truly influence. And that's where the big potential is. I mean, imagine what could, I mean, there's really no limit on what you can achieve if every single day you just work a little bit on yourself. Work a little bit on yourself every day, whether it's your voice technique, making your body stronger, maybe exercising more so you have more breath and you don't get out of breath easily. Maybe trying to have better habits when it comes to food and drinks. Maybe just quitting sugary soft drinks because that's not good for your body and what's not good for your body isn't good for your voice. And then working every day just a little bit on expanding your range. I have the 28-day challenge that I did last year. It's on YouTube. 28 days to help you expand your range. You go through this again and again and again. And if you did that every single day and worked through a little bit every day, if you just do five minutes every day, that will add up. The compound effect is amazing. I've been doing this recently with with you know different stuff, not singing, not singing, excuse me, but just cleaning up my basement, which is, has been a disaster. I mean, my house is very organized, but my basement has been a mess. So I set my timer, give myself five minutes, and then I'm like, okay, go. Put on motivating music on my earphones, and then it's like, okay, go. For five minutes, I, I'm decluttering. And I've been doing this for a couple of weeks now, and my basement looks amazing already. It's not finished, but just a little bit every day adds up. And if you you have to start working on your mindset, because if you want to be a performing artist, you have to have the mindset of confidence. And if you want to 10x your confidence levels, there's not a one one time event that you can do, and then you'll be fine. It's something that you do every single day. Work at it every single day. Try the affirmations. Listen to the affirmations every single day. And once you start doing that for a while, you're going to start having your own thoughts and you're adding your own affirmations and you're adding your own thoughts. And it starts trickling into a lot of areas in your life. And really, for the past three and a half, four years, I've been heavily into learning a lot of stuff, whether it's just, you know, personal development or finances, um, psychology. I'm very interested in some of these things and uh, nutrition, health. I have consumed hundreds of audiobooks and podcasts about those and I'm educating myself every single day. And also about singing, I'm educating myself all the time and I'm doing small things every day and it adds up so much. My life has changed so much over the past few years because I've done those little things every single day, working on myself. I'm not working on the outside world. I cannot, I can't work on the people around me. That's not, I don't have that power, but I do have the power to decide what I'm going to do with myself and with my own mind. So if you want to 10x your confidence levels, work on yourself. It's the best investment you could ever make. And you're singing, you know, we have this going on in the masterclass all the time where people want to, you know, like, I know it's like you want to post something that reflects what you wanted to show. But then again, maybe you should take more opportunities to get out of your comfort zone and just to take this as one more opportunity to work on yourself. It's like, okay, I know I should be doing it, but something is holding me back. What is my affirmation saying? And this is where the affirmations become really powerful. You start encountering all these situations every day and the affirmations comes up. It's like, I don't know, like I have, okay, let me, let me pull up some of my affirmations here. And then I'm, I want to tell you how powerful they are. Let me see. Um, 
Let's see. I got so many. I got like tons and dozens. Okay, so for, for example, one of my affirmations is I will starve my distractions and feed my focus. So when I, I have occasionally those days where I'm just getting on these rabbit trails of like getting sucked into social media or like on the internet and there's an ad and then I check out what's that. And then this is where the, uh, when the affirmation comes and it's like, oh, I've been listening to this every single day for the past year and a half. I will starve my distractions and feed my focus. Starve my distractions and feed my focus. Okay, close all the windows right now. Do what I wanted to do originally. This is how powerful they become because they become part of who you are. And it's like everyone in the master class tells me I become this little voice inside of their head when they're singing too, just because I continuously talk about the same stuff. And I'm like, okay, more space here. Okay, open, lift that soft palate right there. And you see, you spread sideways or like get that posture, lift the chest, lift the chest. <laughs> And I become that little voice in someone's head. And that's what happens with affirmations. They become this little voice in your head. And then when a situation comes up, you are reminded. It's like, oh, I wanted to do this. No, 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 no. My affirmation said that. And that's what you're going to do. It helps you to remind yourself of those things that you really want to achieve and how you want to be every single day because it's so easy to forget we have so much to do we have so much on our plates um yeah very powerful so and if you're interested i do have a class this is kind of an unofficial thing i haven't really advertised it a lot i have a class it's called the success boot camp for singers it's we meet every week and it's really about changing your mindset to become more confident and really also all practical aspects of becoming more successful as a singer. I mean, there's organizational stuff. There is even like, how do I advertise myself? How do I brand myself? It doesn't matter if you're a beginner singer or you want to become a professional. Um, currently, we have a couple of singers in there who, one of them just decided to quit her job, her daytime job, in order to become a full-time singer. She's awesome but she didn't quite believe in herself. And now she's worked through that and changed her mindset about herself because she's truly awesome in, in singing. She is really awesome and she can totally do it. And I'm helping her, you know, just get work through that mindset, but also holding accountable. That is so important because I know it's so easy to fall off the wagon fall off the bandwagon, you know, you start like, yeah, I want to do this thing and I want more confidence. And you start out and then you have no one to hold you accountable to what you said. And it's so easy to have an excuse and it's so easy to get so busy. I know how that goes. Believe me, I'm, you know, there's so much we are doing every day and there's so many people who want something from us, who want a piece of us. And it's so easy. There's a million reasons why you don't have time today to do what you want to do. But there's one I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but there is a, um, I printed out a quote that it said Will Smith, but I don't know if he was the first one who said it, but I love that quote. It's above my desk and it's don't give up what you want most for what you want now. And I always remind myself like every day when I'm doing something, it's like, oh, I got to do this and I got, this is all so important, but I'm asking myself, is this really important? Is this going to get me where I, what I want most? Or is it just what I want right now? <laughs> and so I always ask myself, what is it that I want most? So don't give up what you want most for what you want now. And what you want most, if that is singing in front of an audience and being a great performer, then you must work on your mindset and confidence. And by the way, even if you don't want to be a professional singer, even if you don't want to sing in front of like really audiences, if you just wanted to sing at home, even then, working on your mindset and on your confidence is gonna, oh my goodness, it's gonna change your personal life on every level and your, like every aspect of your life, even your professional life. 
Like I always say, if you can sing in front of people, you can do anything. <laughs> it's like, even at work, if you could sing in front of people, you can do anything. It's like, this is the most personal and most potentially embarrassing thing a person can do is sing in front of people. So what, if you can sing, everything's a piece of cake. It's almost like, it's almost worse than stripping down naked in front of people. I mean, singing is just, it terrifies a lot of people. And I know that it can be so nerve wracking. I have had a lot of situations where I'm, th where I thought like, oh my goodness, what did I get myself into? Oh, do I have to do this now? But if you do this, put your, you know, get yourself out of the comfort zone and just go ahead and do it. You're going to get, you're going to like leap forward in the level of confidence because you did it and you're going to be proud of yourself that you did it. So let me read some of the comments here. Um, if you know nothing about singing, but want to learn, what should I do? Start small, just one little thing at a time. There's so much you possibly could learn and that you would have to address, but you have to start somewhere. And so just start somewhere. Just start singing a simple song. I'm always for starting very simple and starting at the basics. Um, so yes, I would start just somewhere. Start with a lesson. Just start with posture and then address support and how to breathe and then how to vocalize. Oh, but I wanted to tell you about the Success Boot Camp. I have a website, mastery, um, findyourvoice.tv, and that's where there is the link for my Success Boot Camp for Singers. So if you're interested, you can check it out. It's just the most amazing group, very personal. We meet every week once on Mondays. And we figure out how you will find success, maybe not just in your singing, but <clears throat> how to change your mindset, boost your confidence, and also some practical things. How, I don't know, there's a lot of, like, I've been in the business for decades, really, and I've done everything from opera theater to musical theater. I've led, the, I've led a musical theater company. I was kind of everything in it. <laughs> I was like... I did casting, I did the musical, um, I was the musical director, I was the stage director, I was the costume designer, <laughs> I was like everything. Um, I did that for six years and then I have been singing in party bands, in jazz bands, with big bands, any kind of situation you could think of, orchestras, in churches, oratorio, anything. And then a lot of piano and voice, just soloing or duoing. So I have a lot of experience with all the practical stuff, like how do you connect to people who are going to hire you and how you're going to get jobs and how are you going to present yourself? How are you going to build a following to where people find you and want to hire you as a performing artist? So that's the success bootcamp for singers. So if you're interested, you can check it out um, and you can talk to me about it. Uh, findyourvoice.tv is that link. So, um, hi, Joseph. Hi to Mombasa, Kenya. How wonderful. I bet you the weather there is a lot nicer than here right now. It's a very rainy day here in Germany today. Um, okay, Joy says, if I know nothing about singing, but also that I got that already, what is the affirmation app? Oh, okay. The affirmation app is called Think Up. And there is a free version, but in the free version, oh, this is like how it looks on the inside. In the free version, you can only record, I don't know how many, only a few affirmations. And in the paid version, you have like unlimited ones that you can record. But the ones I made specifically for singers, you can, the link is below the video, you can just download for free to start with, just to kind of get an idea of how this could work. Um, and this is how the ThinkUp app will also work very similarly. Like I, again, I'm not affiliated with them. It's just, I've been using it for a year and a half and I love it so much. Um, Michael, brilliant mindset. What do I really want? 
I have my first course session this Friday. Awesome. And have one person interested in it who may turn up. But thanks to you, I'm doing it anyway. Yes. You know, you have to just try something. You don't, you don't know if something's going to work or fail unless you try it. Just try it and see what happens. And then if it doesn't work, tweak it, do it better next time. And you've, at any, in any case, you have definitely learned something. That's my speech. It's like, if I fail, awesome, because now I've totally learned something. I've learned how to not do it, <laughs> which is just as important as how to do it. So, um, and Kristen says, I sing in a choir and my basic focus is to be the best background singer there is. But I really want to be able to sing solo. Just don't know if I ever get confident enough. Yes, I totally understand. And solo singing is so different from singing with the crowd. <laughs> Let's just call it the crowd. And that's why, you know, a lot of my students who have a background in choir singing, it's very difficult for them to because it's a whole different way because you're not following. You have to, you have to be the one showing the initiative even for the entrance. You have to be confident enough to know, now is my entrance. You're not following anyone. You're not waiting on anyone. And there's no one giving you feedback immediately. Oh, I'm right or I'm wrong. It's just you. And so that's a different story. But like I say, it's going to help you in your whole life, like every area of your life. If you can be confident enough to sing in front of people, get you anything. I mean, as a soloist. That, that's important because in a crowd, it's different. Joseph says, I love singing. I'm not shy. I can sing in front of people. That's awesome. That's awesome if you're confident enough to sing in front of people. Now, the next thing would be to tweak that performance, of course, to connect more with people. Um, I still learn lots all the time. And although I have so much experience, really, I've had thousands and thousands of gigs. Really, I can't even count been doing this all my life really and still I'm learning a lot and still I'm getting better all the time at being in front of people um yes should a baritone be a tenor or bass in a choir so in a choir it's really you know being a one voice category in a choir is quite different from being a solo singer so if you're a baritone baritone is usually a category that describes a medium voiced male voice so if you're not a very high singer or not a very low singer you would probably be a baritone however you just may not be yet be able to sing high or low i don't know it depends on your age so i don't know you could be in tenor in choir because you can just switch into head voice the register doesn't really matter too much when you're singing in choir because you're blending with everyone's voice colors and you know even with women it's not so relevant whether you're singing in chest or head voice it's just the tone that you just need to have the pitch right so yeah i don't know you bass i don't know bass and choir does often have to go quite low so you have to kind of just try and see if you got those notes if you got those pitches on the bottom and then, of course, there, there could be tenor one and tenor two, which, you know, one is the higher and the lower one, and even the bass. I don't know how big the choir is. It really depends. Svasi um, Bolt. I'm the front man of a new formed rock band. I nev I've never sang in front of other people. Cool. I really feel the pressure, but it's so exciting at the same time. Yes, but it's awesome. That is the first step to get yourself out of the comfort zone and you're going to know, I mean, it's going to be difficult at first, but you're going to grow. You're going to grow so much. Just the more you do it, the more you're going to grow. And so there's no way around. If you want to 10x your confidence level, you just have to get yourself in front of people. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to do nerve wracking things that are like, oh my goodness. I mean, you have to have a goal of like, I'm going to do this. and Take any and every opportunity you can possibly get to get yourself out of the comfort zone, to, to expose yourself to the people, and to do a performance 
You can do that on live streaming too nowadays. That That is a good practice. I mean, if you don't have gigs lined up, that could be an awesome way to start. Or just even pre-recorded videos. That could be a good practice. I know that my just English speaking skills have gotten so much better just by making tons of videos all the time. I used to not talk um, voice so much in English because, you know, I'm from Germany. I went to college in the States and I studied voice there, of course, but still for years, I, I've never really taught in English, but I have been for years now since I've started YouTube and my English skills have improved so much just because I've been doing it all the time, all the time, every week I'm doing something. And so, yeah, definitely has an effect if you do videos, definitely. So that is really exciting. Congratulations on being the frontman of a new rock band. Awesome. Any singing tips for guys? <laughs> well, it's pretty much the same singing tips that I would give to women. Um, depending on the genre, of course, that you want to sing in. But basically, this is where you, know, you have the same parts built in as a woman. So, okay, here, here's maybe my number one tip for guys. Do not neglect your head voice. A lot of guys don't really practice in their head voice because, number one, either they haven't really found it or it's uncomfortable or it's hard or maybe it's breathy. And so work on that head voice because first of all, it's going to expand your range by like pff, at least an octave. And second of all, you need to use all the muscles that are in your voice because your top voice, your top register, the head voice is going to help you even sound better in your middle and in your low voice because it's like stretching and relaxing. You need to like your whole range of voice. The more you practice in your whole range, the more rounded your sound can be in the end and the more control you can have. Because I mean, there will be times where you're gonna have to transition into head voice. So you might as well practice all of it and go all the way up in head voice too and see if you can expand the range there too. And I just know that there's lots of guys who neglect head voice, just like there's tons of women who have only sung soprano and choir, who totally ne neglect their chest voice. And they don't hardly ever sing in chest voice. Will you sing The Water is Wide and Green Sleeves and Scarborough Fair? When? <laughs> Are you going to Scarborough Fair? I don't know the whole the words. Da 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 Da, 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 da. I don't know the words right now. Da, 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 da. <laughs> no, I'm not going to sing all those songs right now. Maybe at some point I'll make some videos about those. But nice tra traditionals. How do I stop swallowing saliva while singing? I'm so nervous during performance always. How to prepare my confidence right before the performance? <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Um, this is definitely a mind issue. That is when you're nervous, your body starts reacting. And then, of course, I know when you're singing, this happens to me only in the studio anymore. You're like, okay, swallow one more time. And then I can sing because you're scared that your saliva is going to get built up. And then in the middle of a phrase, you're going to have to sing. So you get, <laughs> but this really starts a vicious cycle. And I try to never swallow. I try to relax and just let it be and possibly have just a little drink of water, but really on stage you shouldn't. That's my opinion. I have never had a drink of water on stage ever, even if I have a set that's an hour long, unless I have a cold and or I have a coughing going on and then I really need it. But I just think. It's a psychological thing. I also don't drink at night because I'm like, I sleep now, sleep mode. Don't drink. <laughs> I don't know. It's just me, but it has worked well. But it is definitely a mindset thing. If you calmed yourself and you just got into a mindset of enjoying what you're doing, you might not have that issue so much. Okay, Chia, I have difficulties to sing even in front of my teacher or on the microphone. 
She always says I'm too stiff. Okay. Do you have some exercises or advice to get loose? Again, it's really all here. There's, it's not, I know a lot of choir directors and there's a lot of value in those exercises about loosening up your shoulders. Although when I do this shoulder rolling kind of thing, it, it tightens my shoulders. It never loosens them because I'm using the muscles. This is for me causing me tension and not relaxing, like doing shoulder rolling. I don't know. If somebody gave me a massage on my shoulders, that would relax me. But if I'm giving someone a massage while someone is giving me a massage, no, no point. I, I, choir directors have done that. And it doesn't work for me personally because I want to relax those muscles. But when I'm rolling my shoulders, I'm not. Um, so, but coming back to your question, there's not like an exercise that helps you loosen your body. But what does help is a combination of practicing ahead of time what it means to have good singing posture and which body parts you need to relax. So what you need to do is lift your chest so you can have good support and practice doing that while relaxing your arms, shoulders, neck, and jaw. Just You could practice that every single day. You could just I always tell my students, so whenever you're pushing a shopping cart, whenever you're walking to the train station, whenever you're standing in line at the bank or something, Get into the perfect singing posture. Lift your chest, but relax your arms, your neck. Align your neck. Don't shift it forward or something. And um, arms, shoulders, neck, jaw, relaxed. And that is something you can practice to where even in high stress situations, you can just go like, where's my perfect posture? Where's my perfect posture? Get into the perfect posture. And then even breathe without tensing up too much. You could practice that. Um, and then, other than that, it's really here again. When you're nervous, it wants to creep into your body. Well, there's a little hack I have, of course. When I'm, you know, when I'm doing difficult stuff on stage, of course, sometimes you're like, ah, you know, you're doing like high stuff. Instead of letting it get into those parts of my body that are going to hinder my voice from coming out better, I do something like, I don't know my toes or I tap my toes when I know counting is difficult to, 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 to when other like a syncopation going on I do my toes nobody's going to see that and it's not affecting my seeing part of my body right if I do something with my toes or sometimes I'm thinking I'm just imagining I'm pushing something down into the ground or I'm getting really long and tall that is going to help me to stay in good posture to tighten my support without getting all stiff Okay, a couple more questions, but then it's been almost an hour again. Imagine you are your dog. Well, I have a dog. <laughs> and you just heard, heard you come home and how they are when you open the door. Think of that when you sing every measure of every bar of every song. It's pure elation. <laughs> okay, you mean when the, so when the dog is really happy about someone coming home? My dog is really, my dog is always happy when I come home, but he's not one of those dogs that goes totally crazy when I come. He's just kind of like, he comes my way. He's like, oh, nice that you're here. It's a different kind of personality in dogs, right? I mean, there's those, those kinds of dogs, those breeds that are like <laughs> really hyperactive. And then there are those that are really cool and relaxed. One last thing. I'm a self-taught singer. I can belt and sing a mixed voice. Sometimes after heavy sessions, I get a little hoarse. How can I be sure that my technique is good? Hmm. Well, okay. You just have to ask yourself, why are you getting hoarse? Is it because, I mean, it depends on how long you have sung. Hoarseness, what I've experienced over the years is that lots and lots of practice does help a lot. I feel like my vocal cords now are made of steel almost because almost nothing bothers me anymore. I could do anything. Maybe it's also I have good technique by now, but I remember that 10 years ago I got hoarse quicker than I do now. Maybe I don't sing as much. I mean, I still sing a lot, but I mean, there were times I had crazy, like a lot of gigs, crazy many. <laughs> I sometimes had like 
four gigs over just two days. So two a day, and then the next day again, I'm like flying all over the place. Um, so yeah, you just have to ask yourself and assess while you sing. I mean, the best indicator is pay attention to what happens while you sing. That's what I always do for gigs. I always try to like, what am I doing right now? Do I <laughs> gargle with Ramazzotti? Oh, yeah. Hey, Johnny. I imagine you do. <laughs> gargle with Ramazzotti. So, yeah. Ask yourself while you sing, is that causing strain? Does it feel good? Is it too much if I do this for a really, really long time? Will you sing What a Wonderful World? I, I will at some point. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yeah, that is definitely a good song for mindset also. And that's my philosophy of life too, definitely. Sue. Thank you so much, everyone. This has been uh, almost an hour again. Again, check out my affirmations for singers. The link is below this video. And if you want more and you want to be in my class in the Success Bootcamp for Singers, check out findyourvoice.tv. Click on Success Bootcamp Singers. And that is a group where we really get down and dirty on get your mindset in order. And I'm going to help you get where you want to go in your singing journey. Practical tips and mindset. It's all important because you got to get in the mindset and work on yourself to achieve your goals, but you also have to talk to the right people and do the right stuff and get the right equipment and, and build your brand. It's all important, right? Thank you so much, Rino. It's good to see you. And by the way, everyone, I want to publish more Q&A videos. So if you have a question that you would like to ask me on video that I can then answer on video, that I can publish on YouTube. Rino was the first guinea pig who did that. I think a couple of weeks ago, I published that episode. Please send me a message on Facebook. Look at my Facebook profile, like, like the page, Freya Casey, singer and vocal coach. And then you can send me a, a message with your video attached. It just has to be maybe like 30 seconds, maybe a minute at the most, where you just ask me a quick question. And hey, Freya, I would like to know this or that. And of course, you could demonstrate a short piece of something or an exercise that like you're having a problem with. And then I could answer it on air on YouTube. That'd be awesome. Please find me on Facebook and send me your videos. I would be very happy to answer. And yeah, I, I want to involve you guys more. And then you can, if you have a YouTube channel, also tell me about it. And then I will shout, your, shout out your YouTube channel if you send me your videos that I can answer. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you hanging out with me today. It's been quite, quite a long time. And don't forget, on Thursday, 12 noon Central European time, I'm going to go live again here with my next episode of the Vocal Exercise Bootcamp. It's going to be episode number four, and we're going to talk about head voice this time. And don't forget to download those affirmations and tell me what they do. You don't know until maybe a few weeks into them, but it's going to start working out. I know it. Have a great day. Bye. And always keep on singing. Don't forget that.